It's interesting, uh, the brome grass, something that I've sown in for biodiversity, the yews don't like, yet the coxfoot or orchard grass, they do love. And so many people say that coxfoot or orchard grass, sheep don't like, yet they prefer it. Whereas the brome, they don't, which is kind of interesting, I find. Anyway, the tall grasses you're seeing there is the brome, which looks like a kind of oat or barley. It's kind of a blue sort of grass. There you can see them walking. You can see that's the brome grass that is going to seed. So I'm gonna put the horses in here to graze it down a bit and move the hoggets to another location. Okay, that's where the hoggets are and I thought I better show you what the different grasses are there I'm talking about other than from a distance point of view. So down here, this is a kind of a, the small paddock, the wind charger film field. This is a brome grass. I don't know what kind. There's, just like there's many different kinds of rye grasses, uh, this is a kind of brome. And I'm not sure um, which one it is. But this is coxfoot. We have several different varieties of coxfoot here. This one here is the one with the purple in the seed head when it's growing up. You can see there's another one here. This, I think, is a kind of fescue. Um, I could be wrong. Um, grasses are difficult. But one of my favorite grasses, I saw it a moment ago. No, it's not here. Or I can't see it now. But is one known as the hungry grass. But uh, this field doesn't have very much of it. But I have it in other locations. But here you can see that's another coxfoot. This is the, this is the green variety that doesn't really have that much purple in the back. So I think that's the green variety. Um, there's all different kinds of grasses. Here's another brome. So you can kind of see, if I pick these, you can see the differences in the seed heads. There's the coxfoot. Here's the coxfoot. Now, you can see that's just three different varieties. Whoops! My hand slipped. Or rather, the grass has slipped out of my hand. Okay, so these are three different varieties of grasses here. There's also rye and other grasses. But the brome is the one with these big sort of seed heads that uh, kind of look like they could be a kind of oats or barley, but they're not. So that's just three different grasses that are here. Even the dogs like eating grasses. And you're just being very patient. Yes, I know, you're such a fun pup. Anyway, I love how, um, what is this called, a dandelion. I love how dandelions, when they're wet, they kind of go all punk. That's not very punk. But um, this one over here, is a little bit more punk as their tufted bits collect together. As you can see, there's lots of clover also in this. This is uh, the paddock that I use during lambing and I like to keep it as rich as possible in diversity. You can see over here, there's uh, dandelions, there's uh, plantain, um, all kinds of different species. Here's some daisies. They're closed at the moment because there's no sun. So, and up under this tree in the sheltered area, there's some of the self-heal because it likes uh, to be slightly under the shelter. Where is it? I noticed it earlier this morning when I was coming up here. There it is. There's self-heal right there. It's a beautiful little plant that pollinators absolutely love. There's more of it over here. And pollinators absolutely love self-heal. 
And then there's a dog rose, there's hawthorn in the hedge. There's lovely hawthorn. And of course, nettles. So this paddock is, it, we're getting there. There's still too many thistles, which I don't like so much because of their effects on uh, sheep with a disease called ORF. And it used to be full of nettles. Not nettles, sorry. I'm talking about this, thistles. So I've got to get rid of that thistle. But over here, it used to be just loads of thistles. And I've gotten it down to this little patch here now. So we're getting less and less thistles in this area, which is good. I don't mind them in the hedgerows, but uh, I don't want them out in the fields so much. So it's partially is getting the soil right. So I need to spread more wood ash in this area to eliminate the nettles. You can see there's more nettles over there. Not nettles. Jesus, I can't say things right. Thistles, thistles, thistles. Those are thistles, not nettles. Thistles. Anyway, those of you who saw earlier videos, yes, there's thistles in here, but you can see the oxide daisies are coming along and doing really well. I'm very excited about the yarrow and oxide daisies and primulas and evening primrose are all planted in here underneath the uh, spindle and um, rowans and walnuts and, uh, oh, my brain. No wonder I keep calling nettles thistles and thistles nettles. My head is fried. Oh. Thistle, 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 thistle. 